It's time to learn. Hi there, fellow YouTubers. Andy Malone, Microsoft MVP and a Microsoft Certified Trainer. Welcome back to the channel. This time, I thought we'd crack the whip of adventure and have a look at some of the cool features within or buried within Microsoft 365. So just to remind you, if you've not subscribed, go ahead, click on that subscribe button, ring that bell, and you won't miss out on any of the cool stuff. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so first up, we're gonna take a look at custom domains. Now, some of you may think, oh, you've seen this before, but check this out. They've made a few changes to the settings and for domain settings. Now, in the past, there was a TXT record that had to be inserted into your DNS environment. Now, of course, many of us don't have DNS environments, but we do have websites. So what I've done is I've taken my Bob's uh, bobsboats.com domain, and if you go and it's now asking me, or it's saying, you know, hey, you know, you need to go ahead and you need to verify this domain name. Well, something that you may not have noticed recently is that you can now do it not just by the traditional text record, but you can also add a, the file to your website as well. So all you simply do is copy this text record to the root of your website. So if you're on Wix or something like that, then it's really, really simple to do. And it just works and it's great. And it's so much easier than editing traditional DNS records. So that is my definite first thing. So really, really simplified, brilliant. Now, another thing which is equally awesome is speech recognition. Now, we're all aware of AI and how it works, but now you can switch it on for your entire tenant. So users using Teams and groups and anything else that requires speech recognition, it will now be allowed at the tenant. Um, and then again, this obviously has potential security implications. And again, you should read about that here and learn more. So again, really, really simple, one single click, and it just works, and it's awesome. Okay, number three, email encryption. Amazing how many people don't use this. So uh, again, a couple of ways to do, or to encrypt an email. I'm gonna create a new message here, and I'm just gonna come up and go to the ellipse, and in the ellipse here, you can see I've got two options. Do I want to encrypt or do I want to do not forward, which means it's for your eyes only. So I'm selecting Alex in my uh, little uh, demo and I can type in a message and, and so on. Now, there are a couple of gotchas which some people find just a little bit confusing about this. Um, if I go ahead and maybe try and add a file before I send it. So if I go and attach a file, go and see what happens. So we'll click on the attach file button and I'll go ahead and say, right, okay, what do we want to attach? So let's just have a quick browse for a file. I'll just choose any one at random here and I'll click next. Now look what happens, you get an error message uh, and it's saying, okay, how do you want to, do you wanna make a copy of the file? Now, because the file is encrypted, it's saying, do you want to attach a copy? And again, that's not great security. If you want to send encrypted files, you need to do it like this. So again, we create a new message um, and we choose the recipient. So who's it going to do? So I'll say this is for Lydia. Um, and I will, again, type a subject, type your message. And the difference is this time I can attach a file. Now, if you're using sensitivity labels, um, you can go ahead and you can attach a file here. Um, so if you're using things like data loss prevention policies, sensitivity labels, remember these also have their own encryption built in. So again, you'll notice that the traditional encryption option now is not available. So just to show you the two different ways of doing that. 
Okay, and the next one is integrated apps. So you may think that, hey, I just get Microsoft 365 apps with Microsoft 365. Who oh, no, you get so much more and it's completely expandable here. So not only do you get the oodles of 365 apps here, but you can also go to the App Store. And again, in the App Store here, there are thousands of apps to be had from standard line of business applications. Many of them are free, many of them are not, and you will have to purchase them. Now, again, if you don't see the App Store, it's possibly because um, your administrator has blocked them from you. OK, but needless to say, it's there just exactly the same as the Windows Store and so on. Now, what makes this quite interesting is it's not just apps, but check it out. You can also order in consulting services. So if you're a consultant or you want to offer your services or you can use any of these partner organizations who will partner with you. That's just awesome, isn't it? OK, so not just apps, but consulting. Now, this next one is, again, fantastic. I've talked about guests, users in Azure Active Directory before, but now you can add them in Microsoft 365. So you simply go into the admin center, go into guest users, and you can add in a guest user here. Now, the thing about this, by the way, uh, you can find out more details. There's a little how-to link there. Um, just remember, it's a five to one ratio. So every guest that you, uh, you need to have a paid license for every five guests that you have in the company. So if collaboration with partners and colleagues and so on is important, then you can add them in here and you can share apps, you can share services with them and so on. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to create one here. This is James Bond, of course, and James works for MI6.gov because he's a bit of a spy, of course. Um, I'll just fill in his details here. So we'll just say James and then Bond. All right. Now, if I just scroll down, I can put in a little invite message and this will uh, send an invitation out to James and he has to then accept that invitation. The other way to invite, of course, is in Microsoft Teams. So if you are an, a team owner, you can uh, add in Teams. Um, groups, of course, are teams as well. So you can add them to memberships here of a particular group. So again, great. And again, this could be a customer. It could be an external partner. This is fantastic. Now, the other thing that you can also do is you can add them to a role. So you can make them a role admin. So, for example, if I wanted James, if he was a partner company, I wanted him to be, let's say, a, a help desk administrator. Then, sure, I can just go ahead, click on that and select. Now, guests can be administrators in Microsoft 365 and you don't need a license for that. OK, so you simply just save those settings. And now if I go back into Azure Active Directory, sure enough, there's James Bond. Fantastic. Um, OK, awesome. So again, um, you can see all these permissions have come through, all these details, and you just manage them now like a regular user. Look at the email address, though, external tenant.onmicrosoft.com. So it shows me that the user is an external guest. Awesome. Okay. And again, any users that you've created, sometimes the users, by the way, in 365, they lag a little bit. So um, another one that I love as well is, did you know you can now manage mailboxes in Microsoft 365? And I'm not talking about in Exchange, but you can actually do this in the active users area here. So you can simply go into a user account here. So I'll select Adele, let's say. And in Adele's account, of course, we get all Adele's account properties. Now, of course, you've got the usual email um, options here. So you can obviously put in an alternate email address here. Um, and But more than that, you'll notice that quite a lot of the elements of Exchange are now 
um, actually incorporated into this user interface. And indeed, if you go into users or into mail on the mail tab, look at this. This is all Microsoft Exchange. Now, what Microsoft are doing at the moment, they're currently updating their old Exchange interface. So if you if I went into, let's say, properties of this user, it, it may still take me to the old version of this user. But just showing you that you can pretty much do absolutely everything. Um, well, not absolutely everything, but most things from this um, portal here. <coughs> now, um, you, this is a useful one, managing email apps. And you'll notice that IMAP and POP3 are on here. So this is definitely something you probably want to switch off um, because POP3 and, and IMAP don't allow for multi-factor authentication, which is never a good security thing. All right. So there we go. Some of the mail features in 365. Now, as you can see, as I centered, uh, as I said, if it said, you know, manage exchange properties, you can see it now flips me over um, into Microsoft Exchange. And it doesn't flip me over into the new admin center. It flips me over into the, the old admin center, which is a little bit frustrating, but um, but you can see I can, I've now got access to the full exchange uh, admin tool set. So that's, again, a really, really nice feature. Okay, so up next, I love this, by the way, this is the Microsoft 365 Security Learning Hub. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come back uh, into here. And I don't know if you've had a chance to look at this, but this absolutely rocks. So I'm going to go into the security center, first of all. Now, this is the old security and compliance center. So to find the, the cool new features, you need to click on this link here and go into that new admin center and check it out. Look, here we have the learning hub. So you can now, you've got all of this training material. So there's white papers on docs.microsoft.com. There are videos galore. This is absolutely awesome if you want to learn all about the security features in 365. Okay, so absolutely awesome. Definitely go here and check it out. Okay. Uh, and of course, you can search for content here as well, and you can save it. And of course, it's it'll essentially link you through to the uh, other portal. Alrighty, fantastic. So um, up next, user templates. So here in user templates, again, this is just one of those little cool features that um, in here, you can say select a user. Let's say I go ahead and I'll say create a new user here. So I'm going to call this guy Jean-Luc. I'm a bit of a Trekkie, you know. So Jean-Luc Picard and Picard J is the username. And I'm going to go ahead and click next. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and assign Jean-Luc. So I'm going to give him an E5, an EMNS license, um, just so he's pretty much got everything here. And you can also, of course, customize the apps as well. So you get a list of, you know, quite a lot of apps. So if you wanted to customize those, you know, if you didn't want him to get access to Teams or Word or something like that, you could simply take out the checkbox. Now, it's a good idea, by the way, um, you might want to give him an admin role. So do you want to make him a user admin or whatever? And in this case, I'm going to say no. I can also go down to the profile information. I can put some profile information here for Jean-Luc. So I'm going to say, yeah, Jean-Luc's in the sales team. He's in the London HQ. And of course, that means he's in London. All right. And once you've set this up, you can obviously fill this in yourself. Um, you just simply go in and you save that. All right. Uh, once you've done that, just review and finish. Now, 
One of the options that we now have is to save it as a template. So you can save this as the sales team template, which means now whenever you need to create a new user, rather than going through that whole process again, you can just simply click on the template option and generate a template just like from a rubber stamp. Okay, and in the past, this used to be very laborious with PowerShell. So now you can see, I can simply just go up to the user templates here and look, check it out. Here's my sales team template. And again, I could now go ahead and create another user. So I'll call this guy James Kirk and put in the username. And again, look, so you've got all those same properties. Look, it's already pre-populated everything. So it shows me the domain and the password settings. Hey, look, he's licensed already. His profile information, any roles that you've maybe assigned. And then you just go assign. Okay, a fantastic way of assigning permissions and settings as a default. Now, of course, you can go in and any time you can click on those templates and you can manage those templates. So you can simply select that template and you can customize it. And you can also add a, a template here as well. OK, by adding a template here, by the way, is it is the the license is not active. So it's almost like you're uh, adding a user, but not activating him yet. So again, that is the template feature in 365. How cool is that? Okay. So once you've created your template, you simply publish it. Awesome. Okay. Right. So fantastic. Up next, we have got the hidden recycle bin. Now, of course, everybody knows that in Microsoft Office, when you delete something, it goes into the first stage recycle bin for 30 days. And you read any book and that's what it'll tell you. But did you know there's actually a hidden recycle bin that stores content for another 63 days? So that's a total of 90 three days. To find this, you go into SharePoint. And in SharePoint here, you can see I've got my deleted items. Um, but what you can also do is if you go into obviously active sites here, and you can do this for any website, you can do this on a per website um, environment here. So if I just go ahead and let's say open up a particular website here, so we'll say, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and open up this one. And um, I can, if I click onto the URL, it will actually go ahead and open the site up. Now, check it out. Look, you can see we have a button here called Recycle Bin. Awesome. Now, as I said, it goes into there for 30 days. So if you delete anything in the document library or within that team, that's where it goes. But look closer. And down at the bottom here, it says, can't find what you're looking for. Check out the second stage recycle bin. So check it out. And that's where your additional 63 days of content will be stored. And you can restore it back from there. How cool is that? That is really useful. Up next is the Secret Office Configuration Admin Center. Ooh, what's that about? Well, we all know how to download Microsoft Office. Yeah, you just go to the, your portal and you click on download. Okay, well, I tell you, you don't know everything. So if I go into the Admin Center, just a couple of really useful things, by the way. Um, just to let you know that a user can download um, five installs of Microsoft. So Office Pro Plus can be installed on both a Mac and a PC up to five times. So if I simply go into a user account here, so if I go into a Dell, uh, go into a Dell's properties, and if I just scroll right down to the bottom, you can see there's an option here that says Office Activations. So let's say she was on a laptop and the laptop disk crashed or something, you can go in and you can remove a license, give her a new machine, and then re-invoke a new license. Okay, awesome. So let me talk about how can I administer Microsoft Office. Well, check it out. Look, 
all admin centers and look at this you have got the office configuration admin center so in here this rocks by the way so i can simply and i'm going to do a, a a dedicated session on this in the future by the way but look you can simply go to office profiles and i can say hey i want to create a new office profile and this is all the configuration settings so i can call this my sales users or sales team i can put in a description and i can say okay um let it say okay is this policy um, applied to users or is this going to be anonymous users in your organization i got asked that question a couple of weeks ago so there you go there's the answer um so i want to apply to users okay which users so again you can add it to a group so again i'm just going to choose a sales group here so here's my uh, let's say this group here okay fantastic and then next you say configuration policies so please note that initially when you look at this it looks like access but it's not it's every single app you can see that you can either search for a policy setting that you're looking for or you can use the options at the top so once you've located a policy you simply enable that policy so for example if i'm choosing a, a different color hyperlink here so i'm you know there's not enough teal light um, colors in the world so there we go so you can change easily all of these settings and like i said you can jump to all of the products so if i typed in let's say microsoft word here and just hit enter you now get all the different settings for microsoft word so basically what happens is the next time the user logs on to microsoft office all these configurations will be enforced on them this is a fantastic way if you want to get like a uniform kind of structure for your office configurations. How cool is that? It's so nice. And again, you know, it, it can go from the ridiculously simple to the ridiculously complex. And as I said, I'm, this is something I'll probably do a, a dedicated session in the future. Now, the nice thing about, by the way, the policies is it gives you a really nice explanation of what the policy is here you see so it tells you exactly what the policy is what how it's going to apply it and what it's going to do for the user so once you've finished uh, creating your policy you then simply click on create and you've now created your uh, policy for that particular group of users all right and that is so useful i tell you there's so much hidden in 365 i could have done this session uh, probably 10 times over all right so just gives it a second just to save and there you go we are done all right so there we go uh, you'll notice that there you go there's our session here and it tells me who it's configured for and to all right now, other things that we've got here, there are some additional settings that we can have a look at as well. You can configure some security policy settings for your users. You can monitor the app's health, um, OneDrive Sync. So if you've deployed the OneDrive Sync app, that's currently in Microsoft uh, Preview. Like I mentioned, if you want to learn more, you've got tons of videos, uh, white papers, documentation, everything that you need to help you all right and there we go so that is just a little bit about the um configuring uh, office pro plus there you have it just some of the secrets of microsoft 365 i really hope you found that useful and if you did if you've got any questions get them down below so questions comments i love them and i will always do my best uh, to answer them for you now if you've enjoyed it of course go ahead click on that subscribe button ring that bell and you won't miss out on any future stuff because i've got some cool stuff planned all right so really appreciate you coming along to my channel thank you so much and you stay safe and i'll see you next time take care
Thanks for dropping by. Hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and click on the subscribe button and ring that bell and you won't miss a thing. See you next time.